Peace, peace. Peace to everybody. I see my brother Neko Cannon in here early. Brother's height. Peace, Chaotic Scott. Libertas Tucker. Both known as Juma. Ninth Disciple. Demetrius Clark. Akua Arin. Arhin. Duma. See, we got people here early tonight. People must be ready for the vampiric. We'll, we'll be starting in a few, couple minutes. Just waiting for a couple other people to get here. Salam, salam, my salam, Gypsy Goddess. True that. I choose to be happy. About time you choose to be happy and show up. Peace, peace. Go ahead, Chaotic Scott. Make that coffee. John John, what's up? Peace. Had a couple more people. We're going to bang this out. Got some jewels for y'all tonight. Chantel, hello. How are you? DD, peace, peace. Demetrius, you're salivating, huh? <laughs> Vanda, you are on time. Smooth to God, peace. Are we popping in here tonight? All right. So let's get ready to rumble. Anyways, I just had an uh oh, Cool J flashback moment. <laughs> All right, Laver Lavertis, I will answer the questions after I do the actual presentation part. Then I go back and answer all the questions. So that's the format of the presentation. So hold tight. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'll scroll back up and look at all the questions. So let's begin. All right. First of all, as always, I will always begin with giving a description of what is vampirism or vampire magic, vampire sorcery. So let us begin. Vampirism or vampire magic or sorcery is the act of devouring, drinking, or encircling and consuming energy. Life force called chi. Life force is the vital energy which flows through our body. It is directly associated with the body in terms of what we eat, our mental state, and emotions. That is very key as we go on the journey this evening to remember that the energy of the body is dictated by what you eat, your mental state, and your emotions. So keep that in mind as we progress on this journey. In the practice of Armenic yoga, or in Liber Huhi, the chakras are stirred or awakened by the fire snake visualized in meditation and practice. By connecting with the chakras, the arch divas, being centers and deific mass of power may be encircled and cultivated within the mind and body. Now, what are deific masks? I'm sure somebody would ask, they're not familiar with this, so let me briefly go over that. 
deific mask is the mask that you wear on a left-hand path, particularly on a vampiric path, where you wear the mask of a particular archetype that you're trying to embody the characteristics, the attributes, the power, and the strength of that certain archetype, okay? So it's symbolically as if you're wearing the mask of, let's say, Sekhmet, who is considered one of the oldest, if not the oldest, vampiric queen or goddess or archetype in existence next to Tiamat. So when you look at that perspective, you are basically becoming the god or goddess. You are not worshiping as we repeat every week, not groveling, not bowing down to, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You are becoming the archetype, whether it's Oya, whether it's Kali, whether it's Lilith, whether it's Hikati, whether it's Oshun, whether it is uh, Athena, whoever and whatever, whether it's Set, Sut, uh, whether it's Thor, whether it's Shango, you are becoming that, not worshiping it. So let's continue and keep that in mind. The Archdevas being centers and deific massive powers may be encircled and cultivated within the mind and body. This awakened points of serpent power, as it is called, when directed out in magical practice, no matter if, it's, if it is sorcery to obtain a physical result or one to initiate self-transformation, they are usually connected in some way. This energy is vital. Let me repeat that again. By connecting with the chakras, the arch divas being centers in deific massive power may be encircled and cultivated within the mind and body. This awakened points of serpent power, as it is called, when directed out in magical practice, no matter if it is sorcery, to obtain a physical result, or one to initiate self-transformation. They are usually connected in some way. This energy is vital. Chi also directly affects the aura. Now, I'm sure people who've practiced and studied a lot in the right-hand path, which many of us did for years, are very aware that your life force, your prana, your chi affects your aura. The, the vibration frequencies and the color spectrum of your aura will be affected by those things. Depression, anger, and overexcitability will cause this energy to be used up carelessly and without purpose. Some of y'all may suffer from depression. Some of y'all may suffer from over abundant amount of anger or too much excessive excited energy. This is why you find yourself losing energy and drain, which is why you need to consume more. Well, there's a reason for that, and that is because the, the programming, the issues, the pain and trauma is still sitting within you, as we discussed on Thursday night, or Friday night, sorry, the shadow self is still sitting within you, affecting you, because you have not focused on that part of yourself, so it leads to your emotions going to the extreme of depression or anger or being too excited, which will drain you dry, okay? Have you noticed when you practice or when you exercise, you feel vital and direct men mentally? The same as such in yoga practice. Vampirism is the consuming of this energy from the earth and other life around us. Now, some people will tell you that a real vampire does not consume anything but the life force. That is bullshit. A real vampire absorbs energy from anything and everything in existence in and around him or her. So keep that in mind. 
There is a way to tap into all living things around you, a way to tap into and consume that energy. As you best believe, these things you're tapping into are also consuming energy off of you. Vampirism or predatory spirituality is applied in the real world and in the ritual circle, never applying to consuming blood to any extent. A, a vampire sorcerer or magician will not drink real blood. Okay, now let me explain why. In today's world, a lot of our blood is tainted, diseases. Okay. The mental state of a lot of humans is jacked up. So drinking the blood leads to direct contact with that mental issue, which is basically saturated within the blood. The blood is the life essence. It's the living force. And it is found within the blood. Your blood contains your DNA. Your DNA is your genetic code. But it's a living entity or a living energy that constantly shifts and shapes according to your mind, your emotions, according to your interaction with your environment, et cetera, et cetera. If applied to a psychological aspect, vampirism is a subconscious affirmation. Keep this in mind. This is utterly and most definitely important. If applied to a psychological aspect, vampirism is the subconscious affirmation that I or the self is the only God that is and there is no other. You are the only God. That doesn't mean there isn't other gods, but in your world, you are the only God. If you have a person who's worked hard to master themselves, they are a God, but in no way, shape, form, or fashion do you bow down to them, do you worship them or anything else. You respect them as the God they are, but you always hold your own God supremacy within yourself. How do you know this? If you can have a knowledge by interaction with other people, specifically a woman, then you know that you are not that woman. Take, for instance, the word Persicacity. The meaning of this word, according to the Webster Dictionary, is acuteness of perception, discern discernment, or understanding. This would be exactly the description of the Luciferian path with regards to the self or the I. The self is a widely misunderstood arena of practice in the context of left-hand path. The basics, carnal pleasure, are considered the foundation of Satanism, and even some Luciferian thought. This cannot be so as carnal pleasures are subjective based on the upbringing and social makeup of that person. Understand the difference between subjective and objective. Your subjective is your inner reality, your perceptions and how you see things, and your, your, your life, your inner workings of your life. So for example, As it says here, your subjective is based upon your social programming. It's based upon your upbringing, whether it's through culture, ethnicity, nationality, country, same shit, right? Ethnicity, that's a little different, but nationality and the country of origin is all affecting you all at once. Now, what would be considered pleasurable, let's say, in Puerto Rico may not be considered pleasurable in New Mexico or Omaha, Nebraska. What may be considered pleasurable in Jamaica may not be considered pleasurable in Sacramento, California. The upbringing, the culture, all of that has a lot to do with your subjective existence. That is why carnal pleasure is based upon what you in your subjective realm consider to be pleasurable, but may not be pleasurable, may be actually painful or harmful to someone else. 
One's, one man's or woman's pleasure is another man's pain. The foundation of the satanic Luciferian mind is to awaken and discover I am God and there is no other. If you can understand that you are not the person talking to you as you are having an unconnected example, you are not connected to their, to their body or the object that supplies to being car, bike, car, etc. Interaction with them, then it is reasonable to recognize you are separate from that individual. If you are separate, there is no direct linking connection. You are significant to the number one, which is you. One is alone and observe the rule of birth and death. You enter the world alone and you leave the world alone. If you are alone in this world as a foundation of awakening, you must know that all things in this world apply to what is called Survival of the fittest. The Luciferian acknowledges that he or she is somewhere placed on this food chain in this physical world without even considering the sub spiritual subjective as of yet. Look to the path of silence and isolation. You must find strength within yourself as well as love, compassion, where necessary, but with discipline, intelligence, and the cunning to survive. May you say that again because that is very important. You must find strength within yourself. This goes back to the shadow uh, class on Friday. You have to go within, deal with your shadow to really find and discover these things about yourself to master those things. Some people, I think, misinterpret what the shadow self was really discussing on, fr on Friday. The shadow self is not about, okay, your shadow self comes up. Now, how do I defeat it or go past it? You don't. The purpose of the shadow self is to bring up these things about ourselves we deny, ignore, or are not really aware that it's buried there and learn to accept it and work with it. Meaning there's certain parts of yourself you have to learn how to work with. You're not trying to destroy it as in the right-hand path mentality where you're trying to destroy humanity and destroy everything that makes you you. Uh, rather, you're trying to find, for example, if you have anger issues, Okay, I confront that anger issue within me. I find out its origin. Now I'm more in control of it because I have the power to use that anger at will when necessary for my benefit. Meaning, if somebody was about to try to attack you, you better best believe your anger better rise up and whip that person's ass for your survival. But if you're taught constantly to bury that anger, ignore it, release it, let it go. When the time is necessary that you need that anger, it will no longer be there because you've ignored it so long that you can't access it at will. This is the stupidity taught in the right-hand path and by conscious community circles. Cut that BS out now. You need to understand these things within your shadow, not to destroy it. Rather, to destroy what's the blockages and the obstacles of you tapping into that so you can learn to use it for your benefit. This will empower you, will strengthen you. Learn to love yourself. And I don't mean in a superficial way. Oh, look at how dandy or gorgeous or beautiful I look or handsome I look today. That's great. Love yourself. That means you love the good, bad, ugly, and beautiful of yourself. You don't pick and choose and just, oh, look at all these wonderful things about me, but then ignore all the shitty things you have about you. Learning to love yourself is loving all of that. Not just picking and choosing and saying, oh, well, let me just focus on this beautiful part of myself. All that other shit don't matter. Oh, yes, it does. Look to the path of silence and isolation. Stop always having to feel like you need to be around people. I'm not, I'm sure a lot of y'all are loners like I am outside of these inter, interactions in these classes. I'm really to myself a lot, but it's because I'm always in a moment of silent introspection, introspective meditation, constantly going within, constantly focusing I'm finding what weaknesses still remain. How can I turn those weaknesses into a strength? 
understanding my reactions to things so I no longer react, but I'm proactive instead of reactive. Okay? But you have to have discipline. How many of y'all really would say you're very disciplined? That's up for debate, and I'll let y'all debate amongst your, your, your personal self how disciplined you really are. Intelligence and the cunning to survive, it is not wrong to have to utilize cunningness for your survival. Whoever tells you that is spooked out, leave them alone. Keep it moving. If you are in the ideal food chain, you must recognize where you are on that concept. Your life and job, for instance, are an excellent example of the use of knowledge and power in the real world situation. If you work at a delivery center as a driver, you are within a chain of command. You have a manager and that manager has a manager. All have someone they are accountable in performance to. This is a food chain. Your work feeds the manager and the manager's performance and result is food for his boss and so on. Moving up that food chain represents a higher responsibility, but more power. This power means a type of freedom in some shape or form, always it is worth it. How many times at the early morning gas station, factory, or super center store do you hear the break room diagnostics at work? I would not want that job for anything. I like being the cashier. I get to clock in and do my job and go home at night. What they fail to recognize in the food chain is that the predator understands all jobs have some manner of time measurement Example, time clock or salary, jobs have the need of someone doing it, and at the end of your shift or needs to be done in a measurable time frame, you will go home. There's no real difference, only the amount of power and payback associated with it. Often, some do not wish to move up, and that is perfect, uh, perfectly acceptable. This is merely an example of intent and environment. The predatory spiritualists Predatory spiritualist is one who utilizes the foundation approach as being defined as I am the only God that is. I will consume and devour or be prey to another. Now, this is my one of my favorite parts right here. You either are a master or a servant. I've said this quite often for years now in many of these videos. You either are a master or a servant. You either master yourself and become a master where people want to serve you, help you, and assist you because you've mastered yourself and they feel that there's something that they want to learn from you, or you will always be a servant waiting on hand and foot, hand and knee for somebody to give you orders and command. You decide which one you want to be. I know which path I chose years ago, and I'm living that now. This is why I don't work for people. I have my own career, let's say or job, let's say. I don't work for other people. If you do, all good. But you should, when you're at that job, your whole goal should be to rise up to the higher ranks of those jobs so you no longer are at the lower rung or the lower part of the ladder. Never, ever, Feed your, yourself or feed your energy to others who have no concern for your well-being. But it happens quite often. How many women chase men who are stupid-ass, idiotic, ignorant fools because he could slay the dick? You are a servant. You are a servant. You worship the dick, so you are a servant. And you can deny it, argue, and fight all day and night, but if that homeboy calls you right now and says, come get this, and you just say, let me get off this show and go get it, nigga, you are a servant. You got no will. You got no discipline. You just run for the dick and give it all up. Brothers, if you on this show and some female calls you and say, come get this good, good, Come get this puss puss and you just jet out because you think this puss puss going to be the almighty of the ultimate. Your ass 
is a servant. Cut it out. You are gods and masters. You make people come to you, damn it. Stop chasing. Make them come to you. I've had conversations with many of y'all. Some of y'all are starting to get this. You make people come to you. That is the predator mentality. You make them come to you. Understand that. All right. The foundation of the Luciferian craft, the vampiric craft or practice itself is that based upon the adversary. We take the role of the adversary, meaning we go against the grain. We don't conform to society, to the moral standards of society, religion, culture, nationality, ethnicity, race, etc., traditions, etc., etc. You question and challenge everything because you are against the norm. You're against the sheeple, the sheep mentality, the cattle mentality, the herd mentality. You are against all of that. All right, so the foundation of Luciferian craft to practice itself is the Avestan religious text concerning Araman, his forms, foundation, and manifestation in the world. The Sumerian Tiamat, the primal devil or dragon serpent of the sea. The Egyptian or Kemetic Set or Soot. And the Syrian and Hebraic Lilith. These types of deific power represent the core impulse to consume, devour, and accumulate energy and power. Let's say that again. These types of examples of deific mass, whether it's Set, Satur, whether it's Sechmet, whether it's Sobech, which at one time was considered a devourer, whether it's Hansu, Hensu, which was considered a devourer, whether it's Unas, the Pharaoh Unas, who devoured the energy of the gods or consumed the gods, whether it's Lilith, who consumes the energy of the, whole, of the humans or the mortals, on and on and on. If you are of that line, that mentality, then you have a core impulse to consume things, to devour and accumulate as much energy and power necessary. Anybody who's listening to this here, if you were to tell me that you're not concerned with becoming more powerful, I'm going to have to laugh at your ass. Let me tell you why. What is the purpose of learning all this shit? All this occult knowledge. What is the real purpose of you con consuming this knowledge for what? To, to be fluffy and more mystical and divine and divine love. And I just care about everybody. Let me hug you in a big circle. No. That's not why you do why you're even watching this. You're watching this because you somewhere in this subconscious mind of yours, unconscious to subconscious mind, you have a craving for power. Admit it and deal with that fact. You have a craving for that power. You want to consume as much knowledge as you can, which leads to wisdom. You want to consume as much energy, whether it's prana, cheese, sexual energy, whatever the case, you have an addiction for that energy. It charges you up. It makes chills go up your spine. It makes you feel in of, uh, it makes you feel supreme. It makes you feel impenetrable. There's nothing wrong with that because some of y'all watching this have been doing this unconsciously and even consciously since you were a child. Well, not a child. Yeah, could have been a child, but more in your teenage years to your early young adult years. 
the brotherhood or the order of set, soot or sooty, the original one, way back in Kemet, thousands of years ago, had mysteries that were just now starting to learn. And some of those mysteries was the power. The power how to consume energy. The power not just to consume energy, but the power to consume sexual energy. It is still to this day that those who are of the Setian connection understand this in an unconscious way and have done things when they were in their teenage years to young adult years of a different kind of manner to even a sexual manner that they said and scratched their heads, how the hell did I end up here or in this situation? That is because you've been unconsciously connected to the priesthood of Set and have done the workings of consuming and devouring to this very day. But that's for the private classes, and we'll go more in depth into that. All right. These type of deific power represent the core impulse to consume, devour, and accumulate energy and power. They are fallen from angelic states or the more considered higher states, as they were once considered perfection. That is, oneness with the consuming light, which acknowledges no other. Is the Christian God also not a vampire as well, if we think in these terms? Hell yeah. The God of the Bible, the Allah of the Quran, is a mother effing vampire. The, one of the best vampires that ever was. Because every time you pray to God, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah, etc., guess what they guess what this so-called God is doing? Feeding off of your energy that you share every day, every second, every night. Oh God, oh Jesus, Ya Allah. Every moment you do that is sucking you dry of energy. The pastor, Pastor Porkchop, the priest, the reverend, Reverend Shake a Leg, the Sheikh, the Imam, they're all sitting in their so called houses of God or worship centers of God, consuming the damn energy that you're feeding in that structure to this mystical, spooky-ass God. Vampirism at its finest. Now, some of y'all may not have looked at it that, that, uh, in that way, but hello, you're now starting to see it. This is why when you go to church on Sunday, because some of y'all still go, you see people falling out. Some churches, the females are even twerking for Jesus now. Twerking for Jesus. Jesus just sitting back like, look at that mighty ass. You have been blessed, my child. You have the first seat in heaven with that ass. But people don't understand. This is the concept that have flooded us and just blinded us and made us stupid and ignorant. All humans are seeking to be predators in some way or another. The predator is becoming in a Luciferian context as someone who plans, masters, and seeks to achieve his or her design upon the physical world. As is suggested in the Luciferian witchcraft and Liber Huhi, what is considered the core element of self However, what is considered the core element of self, however, if carnal pleasure is merely subjective to the meat machine and its experiences, then this cannot be what we call the true self, the Luciferian, the vampire. The primary focus is to discover what the real self is and its root associations are. Once you can find the permanent, you can mutate and transform everything else over time and practice. Thus, the vampire and the Luciferian is continually developing self and not staying the same. Are y'all still the same as you were six months ago? If you are, you ain't doing a damn thing. I'm sorry, but you should be changing on a consistent basis if you're really working this path. 
The idea of spiritual immortality is the divine consciousness separated from the common driving to work meat machine. That was that book that I'm coming from is called The Cult of the Devayansna and Predatory Spiritualism. All right, by Michael W. Ford. I have the PDF five. You can't find the book. I have the PDF five for those who want it. All right, now we're going to be coming from the book of Wampiri. Wampiri. All right, let's get into it. While actual human blood holds psychic energies obtained in advanced vampiric rituals, what a vampire really feeds on is the blood essence, which is the astral life force connected to the chi and the prana, which holds the highest significance for such. Incorporated through many different levels is the path or partial key for immortality. The initiate vampire will learn to set his or her mind from the individual human and realize all progressive change and evolution is caused by him or her alone. Boy, I wish the conscious coon community could hear this. Of course, they probably think I'm crazy because I'm talking about vampirism. They look at me, that's that European stuff. No, you dumbass, it's not. Anyways, the initiate vampire will learn to set his or her mind from the individual human and realize all progressive, let me say this again, Y'all should take this, 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 this little statement right here and post this shit all over social media where these conscious idiots are at. Anyways, the initiate vampire will learn to set his or her mind from the individual human and realize all progressive change and evolution is caused by him or her alone. Not in this kumbaya, let's all hold hands and shift this consciousness mentality for our people. Yet, I heard that shit since 1989. We're in 2019, y'all. How many years is that? Should I even forget? Anyway, 30 years, right? And the same shit these conscious idiots are saying today, I heard in 1989. We got to all come together. We got to support each other financially. Buy black. Do this. Do that. I'm not a spring chicken, y'all. I've been around for, for a minute. In 1989, I heard that. I was there when the pro-black movement started in hip-hop. When we had King Sun, Brand Nubians, X-Clan, Tribe Called Quest. On and on and on. De La Soul. One of my favorites, KMD, who my man MF Doom is still representing. All right? You can name Buku Mana groups that was back then kicking consciousness, this pro-black mentality, do for self, come together. Guess what, y'all? It's 2019. I still don't see a change. Or oh, it seems like things are changing because social media is the new platform. So you can get information and connect people faster on the World Wide Web. Shit still ain't progressing. How many damn schools have some of these conscious fools been trying to open for how many years now? And every time they do that, there's some other crap connected to it where it's still not open. I don't know. I don't know what's going to take people to realize. Real change starts from the self. And as one person becomes a master over the self and another does, then, maybe then, you can start a chain reaction. Until people master themselves totally, you can't ever come together in a group and do some uh, tremendous change. Let me tell you why. Because if your issues are still laying deep in the surface and you're in a group environment and those issues are challenged for whatever purpose, it's going to cause a explosive situation when your issues arise and it's going to cause conflict and separation within the group. And I know a lot of y'all who are in those conscious communities know what I'm talking about. You get into these family discussions, family meetings, 
and it always becomes explosive powder keg and nothing ever gets resolved. Anyways, the vampire is God itself. Here we go again with the same statement. The vampire realizes that all other humans who are not among his or her rank or kin are prey and pawns. Woo! Let me say that again. Anyways, the vampire is God itself. You are the God. Male, female, transgendered, shemale, uh, homosexual, lesbian. I don't give a shit. Those are all titles. Enjoy what you like. You are a God, you are a God, period. However, if you're a God, you have to realize as a vampire, all other humans who are not among your rank, your peers, or your kin, meaning those who you allow to be in your bloodline, vampiric bloodline. I'm not talking about family bloodline because some of your family are the worst traitors ever, backstabbers and fools ever. I'm talking about the people you are that y'all connected, y'all loyal to each other. If you're if they're not in that, then everybody else is there as a prey or a pawn to be manipulated. If you don't like that mentality, which is related to the Sith mentality, which is deception, cunning, and sorcery, is how a Sith masters other people and takes power then you might need to exit stage left or right and take your fluffy ass somewhere else. Because if you really want to know the power of vampire, let me show you. I'm going to use a Sith as an example. You remember the movie Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, number three. When Anakin finally becomes Darth Vader, right? Constant... Uh, Emperor Constantine, well, shit, not Constantine, Emperor Palpatine, right? Or the Senator Palpatine, who became eventually Emperor. He was right under their noses, y'all. This, this dude, this dude was a Sith master. He was a Sith Lord, okay? He's a Darth. He was sitting right under the Jedi noses. The Jedi are so bigged up in the Star Wars saga Everybody's the Jedi this and Yoda this. Yet, they could not see for three damn movies. The first three Star Wars, right? First one, I always forget the title of the first one. Then you have Clone Wars. Then you have the Revenge of the Sith, the first three. Before the original three, four, five, and six. But anyways, he was sitting there for three movies manipulating things behind the scene. And they never figured out that that was the Sith master they were looking up, looking for the whole time. That's a vampire, y'all. That's how you use cunning. That's how you use deception. And that's how you control the pawns in the game. There ain't nothing wrong with that. If you still think there's something wrong with that, then you may never become a millionaire, billionaire, or even successfully financially in your life. Because all these rich people know that there's prey and pawn. And they will move the pieces according to their will for their success. And it's about time y'all start getting on that mission and stop letting these other people do that to everybody else. Get a piece of the pie. Life force is drained from humans through astral contact. By a show of hands. I can't see y'all, but whatever. By a show of hands, how many of you have astral projected or astral travel? Say yes or thumbs up in the chat room. So when I go back in there, I can see. Life force is drained from humans through astral contact, as well as clairvoyance, amongst others. Hmm. The powers of astral hunting through dream and drinking, the purest life is only best described through the experience itself. The symbol of the vampire who drinks blood from sleeping humans, Opfers, is not far removed from the astral vampire predator known as Varkalachi. 
who drains life force from the sleeping human's astral body. Now, there's a couple of y'all who actually visited me in the astral state because I saw y'all. I haven't seen uh, one of the individuals who, who did that and told me after the fact that in, quite a, that in fact it was her. I haven't seen her on here in a minute. But yes, she was one of the individuals who visited me in the astral room and I saw them. Okay, and I told him on the show, I mean, on the video shortly after that, one of y'all came to see me. I ain't going to call y'all out names, but one of y'all came to see me. Well, recently, this week, about two of y'all came to see me. Yeah, I don't think I don't see y'all now. I see y'all. Anyways, it's another story. Through the night side. The vampire, through will and practice, can shift, shift shape or shape shift to hunt, to hunt amongst the shadows. Now, when you and we're gonna get into this a little in a little bit after I do the witch's light. When you actually astral project, you should take on a certain form or shape, not the person you're in. You should take a different shape. When you ask to travel, there's a reason for that, which we'll discuss in a, in a little bit. The forms can be several. A vakalachi, a form of demonic bat wolf and dragon resemblance to wolf and bat. This is all based on general and simple scientific law. Vampiric communion is a central part of vampiric survival and renewal. Secrets of vampiric communion are first described in Art of Vampiri and further in Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. Cthulhu, huh? Some of y'all got a little hype when you heard that. Anyways, let's keep it moving. All right. Now, let me go into the witch's blood. Before I, the, then I'm going to come back to this part, which is the art of vampiric or vampiric tendrils. So first, let me go over the witch's blood. This is coming from Sechem Apep by Michael W. Ford. I have these books on the website. If you don't have it, shame on you. If you're really into vampiric, anyways, if you're into vampirism, vampire magic sorcery, you need this book. Contact me, surfingcrystals.com. Get it. Anyways, summoning the witch light. The witch light is something that you should do before you work in vampire magic or astral project. Okay? In a standing position, notably do this in front of your altar. Place your feet together and assume a straight posture and let your arms be neatly at your side. Observe Egyptian statues and art for an excellent example. Visualize a pale or blue brilliant light directly above your head. I tend to see a purplish light, and that's because I combine the blue with the red. But you got to find what color floats your boat. Some of y'all may like pink. I don't know. Anyways, and visualize that light directly above your head. On an in-breath, visualize a tendril of this witch light drawn down from your crown center to your breast or heart. A tendril is like an arm. It's like a tentacle. It's like an octopus arm or extension, like Cthulhu's extension of the, the arms or tentacles, okay? On an in-breath, visualize the tendril of this witch light drawn down from your crown center to your breast or heart. The center should be a blazing black and blue fiery center. Now exhale and visualize this tendril of blue and black fire descend from your heart center to your feet. And breathe in. Visualize a fiery Flash of black light rise from your feet upward slightly 
less bright than the descending witch light. Breathing out, this fiery witch light remains constant and fills your entire form, expanding outward, and you breathe in and out with slow pulses of breath. Okay, that is the witch light, which will add another part to it. Now let's go back to the art of vampiric tendril. The art of drinking of the essence of life force from living humans or other living and uh, other living forces and and and, and eh. living forces and entities is termed the art of the vampiric tendril. The vampiric tendril is the prime symbol of our order. Well, this is coming from the temple of Azagoth, I mean, Azagatoth. Uh, but our order is going to have a different symbol. And it's going to have a different meaning. So keep that in mind. It's juicy, the stuff that's going to come out. Anyway, the vampiric tendril is the prime symbol of our order and represents the art of draining life force and causing... Contact with your intended prey. The symbol is not overly complex in appearance, but its uses are varied according to the warlock, witch, sorcerer, sorceress, who would use this to jail and practice the art it contains. For those familiar with the process of imbuing physical objects or symbols with an astral energy, you may consider its application when the vampiric tend tendril was created. It is, in fact, one of the oldest created sigils of the temple of Ag Azgtoth and can be obtained upon request. Wait. Okay. The second symbol of the temple of Azgtoth Toth, is the coffin. It's always why I tell you guys you should have a coffin on your vampiric altar. Not only does this correspond with the vampiric principle of the human through vampiric metamorphosis and training, it also has a very large symbolic significance regarding the communion of the Dracul, summoning of the undead gods in which the arising vampire sacrifices his accumulated life force from his predatory journeys until exhaustion sets in. Then which comes the regiving of life force from the undead which is symbolized by the tendril near the top of the coffin, which pours down blood upon the resting place of the corpse, thus en enabling new life, higher powers through constant practice of vampirism, metamorphosis, and finally, immortality among the undead gods. This is not an easy path, and it must be stressed that vampirism, unlike other forms of the occult, must be taken on as a constant practice. The vampire faces many tests, but needless to say, if you fail at your arisal to the throne of the beast, a fate worse than death awaits thee. The art of the vampiric tendril involves astral life force draining in many different ways. There is the practice of the evil eye, which is what the skilled magus can implant thoughts, drain energy, and instill certain factors which will affect the recipient of the enchantment later on. There is a certain ritual that you can do. Um, you do it in your altar room, and then shortly after, you take rest and astral project where you can actually go visit the intended target and implant thoughts or whatever else you want into that individual and see the results happen later. Now, I want all of y'all to practice this. If you have an intended target, and God damn it, you can't use me as that target. Shit. Anyways, if you have a target, tonight, and we'll go over this in a little bit, tonight, I want you to go to that target and plant a seed, a thought, a seed, and see how quickly you get the result because that person will contact you whatever, out the blue, whatever you planted there, and, and it'll be brought up. Try it, okay? By projecting thoughts through the use of the unblinking stare. Oof, the unblinking stare is serious, y'all. 
But again, like I said, a lot of this we're going to go through in um, the private classes when the order is, in, is set up. I'm blinking stare. Your astral body touches the victim and your thoughts are instilled into his or her mind and the individual will always feel them as his or her own thoughts and act. Well, I don't know how, I don't know if y'all know how, how powerful this is, how serious it is, but I'm smiling, laughing because I don't seen this actually happen. And it, it happens rather quickly. When you actually project and plant thoughts there, they may contact you like first thing in the morning. Just telling y'all, I don't know. I, I don't seen this. Some of y'all seen this too. Anyways, for instance, if you wanted the person to pick up a book through this practice, you could use the phrase, that book looks interesting. I must get it. Never say, I want that person to pick up the book. You, you put a suggestion. You don't tell them, well, geez, I want you to, you know, I want that person to pick up the book. You kind of make them look at the book. And it's almost like a seductive gesture. Look at that book. Wow, that looks interesting. That plan seed faster than just saying, look, motherfucker, pick up the book, all right? That is not the correct, uh, anyway, that book looks interesting. I must get it. Never say, I want that person to pick up the book. That is not the correct method, and it will not work. Always implant a statement into the person's head that will make the person think that it is his or her own idea. Like some of you do. You just plant a seed in one of these females you like. You don't say, I want you to look at me as I'm the sexy god. It's not going to work, dude. Especially if you ain't not even close to sexy. Might as well hang that dream up. Rather, you would say, you know, that individual at your job, they're fairly interesting. Hmm, maybe you want to take a second look at them. See? Anyways, whatever. I ain't going to give no too many jewels. <laughs> All right. So you want to make the person think that it's their own ideas, not for the sake of the person finding out that you are implanting ideas in their head. That is quite ridiculous. The trouble with using indirect methods in this art is that it tends to cause too much confusion in the brain of the recipient to reap, your, reap results for yourself. Human prey do not believe for the most part that they can be mentally influenced without their knowledge. Now, this is real interesting statement because it's true. A lot of humans do think they cannot be mentally influenced without their knowledge. Bullshit. Almost all of us are mentally influenced. Some way, shape, form, or fashion by someone, by media, music. You're mentally influenced all the time. You just think it's your free will letting that shit in there to influence you. Man, sorry, not, not happening. Because there's some songs where the first minute you hear, you can't stand. You're like, this song is horrible. It sucks. Three months later, your ass is rapping, singing, and dancing to that shit. How the hell did it get in your head? The hook, that repetition got in there, sublimely suggested thoughts and ideas to your head, and you opened up to it. Anyways, the, vamp the vampiric undead as well as the living vampire always promote the literature and teachings which continues to brainwash human society and thus blind them to our hidden ways. Y'all, this is not for us to be running down the street saying, I'm a vampire. Check me out. It's not about going to the, the corner, talking to your boys in the corner, sitting on the stoop and saying, yo, check this out. I'm a vampire. It's better to keep people stupid than make them aware of things sometimes. Yeah, you can feed them some knowledge here and there. But when you on this path, the nightshade path or the night side path of vampirism, it's a secret what you do. It's not there for everybody. This is a general class, but I do not talk about what I do as a vampire in the night. And you shouldn't either. Keep that ish quiet. Stop running around promoting this stuff as if you're Big Willie. You ain't. None of us are. We're getting there. 
because we still practice on a consistent basis to get better and better. Anyways, it's another story. Astral life force draining through sight involves the use of your eyes. Some of y'all got real seductive eyes naturally. Use that shit physically and use that shit in the astral plane. Learn to use your eyes. And if you don't know how to use it by now, learn. Some of y'all, I can look at some of your eyes and can see the, the power that you possess, but your ass just ain't tapping, tapping into that power. So it just goes and becomes a lesser power. Anyways, astral life force draining through sight involves the use of your eyes and extension of the astral body, the vampiric tendril, to touch your victim and remove the life energy or life force from them. Small, completely undetectable motions with the fingers and hand, as well as physical inhalation can speed the process of the receival of energy from the victim. It's this simple, y'all. I'll give you an example. You see someone you like. You feel their energy. You're just like, damn, that shit is just popping. That energy got me thirsty, right? You subtly walk by that individual and you plant the thought in their head. Before you even get there, you, you see yourself sending a tendril to their, their crown, their mind, and you plant the thought. When I walk by you, you're going to look and smile. So what happens is if you do this properly, they will look and smile. So you casually graze up against them or or bump into them. Now, if you know them, you stop, you extend your hand. And when you shake their hand, the whole time you're looking in their eyes, swimming in their eyes with the power to drain their life force or sexual energy. Second fold, you can implant thoughts at the same time. I'd have to actually show y'all, this is why we're going to do the private Skype or dual classes or Google Hangout classes, so I can actually show y'all how to do this. And if I ever get to meet some of y'all, I will show you the actual way to do that. Some of y'all may think you know, but it's more to it than just, okay, I did this naturally. That's great. Because I will show you there's a lot more to it than just that. Okay. As the vampire strengthens his or her art and power, other means of life force draining are possible. The art of astral life force draining from the human while you are completely detached from your physical body and a part of the astral plane is one of the primary practices of vampirism. The sleeping human provides the purest life force, which will violently or subtly increase the vampire's life force. The more beautiful the victim, the purer the life force. As the human sleep, they have no control over their astral body as they are not practitioners of our art and have certain weaknesses. While the vampire has many uncanny advantages over the human prey, it is possible when the vampire's astral body has approached the prey to enter the dream state of the human and implant certain senses or implant certain scenes in the human subconscious. Let me say that part again. I keep repeating that part because y'all, it's one of my favorite. Parts of vampirism and something that I, uh, more people would utilize this, they'd get further ahead. It is possible when the vampire's astral body has approached the prey to enter into the dream state of the human and implant certain scenes in the human subconscious. It is possible, trust me. Been there, done that. Through properly prepared potions and elixirs, it is possible to cause... You can cause sicknesses in individuals, or you can even heal individuals in the astral plane as a vampire. Remember, the more life force which you obtain for yourself, the less life force for the human. Thus, the weaker and more fragile his, the weaker the, the weaker and more fragile that the individual will become. So be careful because you don't want to drain to the point that you harm them. And cause serious problems. You drain just enough to charge yourself up and keep it moving. Don't be greedy. God damn it. Do not be greedy. 
It is always the pleasure of the vampire or vampire to be able to drain the purest life energy from the living humans. Then muse as the human world utterly crumbles into chaos and disorder before you as your world increases in experience and you come to know the way of the vampire dragon Tiamat and the way of the black wizards. All right, so now let's go back to this. The vampiric shadow. The vampiric shadow is a projected shadow which is created from your astral body and sent forth while connected by a thread or tendril of your witch light center. The shadow may bring you impulses and visions of the astral plane while still being directly associated with your astral power. This technique is best performed during the waxing cycle of the moon, thus performed during the period from the new moon, black moon, to the full moon. Mm -hmm. You can do it at any time, but that's when it's sometimes best to do it. But any time works too. Now, last part before we take questions. I know some of y'all got some juicy questions. Hold your asses up. Summoning and sending forth the vampiric shadow. Perform the summoning of the witch light first, which we discussed a little bit ago. From your upper body center, the witch light into a sphere of black and fire extending about seven to eight feet from your body. The sphere, once it reaches the proper distance, may be expanded and via a cloud of shadow shape into a physical form, be it theriomorphic, a type of vampiric beast, or even as a hooded black figure as an extension of your spirit. Once this figure has been formed according to your desire, command it to go forth to your chosen place or to a specific one you wish to feed from. This command should be simple in one sentence so that there is no confusion as to your goal. Visualize this journey and breathe in and feed from the astral until completion. This process should not extend beyond one hour for you may fall asleep without completing the act. Return your extended astral form back the way in which it came from after the feeding contact directed and commanded by your seizing and drawing in of the astral, the vampire shadow will release the one you are feeding from and with careful breath be drawn back to your body. It is always good after you astral project or you wake up in the morning and you know you astral projected that you ground yourself. Listen to music, dance, exercise, have sex, eat something good. Yeah, eat something good. Take a ride in your car, something to ground yourself again. All right. All right, my peeps. Let me scroll up. Thirsty as heck. So before I start reading these questions, I got to take a sip of this good old water. All right, so before we begin, again, say hello to my blood moon symbol, blood moon vampire, which is my symbol as Naksuti. Now, I've, before I actually take these questions, let me tell you this. You should all, this is just before we get to actually opening up the order and we actually do rituals for the order, you should all take on a new name or wait to the first initiation in the order to receive your new name, a vampiric name, okay? And we'll go over how that actually is done uh, in another time. All right, anyways, let me say, let me go, let me go, let me, all right. All 
Okay, Lavertus Tucker. Is it possible to use Venom as a vampire archetype? You can use anything you would like to as a vampire. Um, even in the astral project, I mean, in the astral plane, you can create a potion or elixir before you go there to carry it with you as venom. This is one of the parts we touched on um, from the notes that was we were coming from and the books we were coming from. So yes, you could you could create potions or elixirs to either harm someone or help someone, depending on what the purpose and what you're trying to accomplish. I'm on Blackstone. Peace, peace. Alright, Dark Side of the Force, peace. Good good to hear you. This is your first time. Keep checking it out, bro. This we deal with a lot of the darker aspects of the occult. Uh, we go into vampirism, a lot of the left-hand path aspects. We go into Luciferianism, primordial chaos, on and on and on. So glad you could join us. Hopefully, you check out some of the other videos and we keep rolling. Tashawn Gill, peace. Good to see you. I would say, Andre Pope, that a lot of us could use more discipline. Discipline is something that I would feel that a lot of us lack or may not always have. Cosmic Serpent, peace, peace. Good to see you. Yes, there's a lot of coochie slaves out there, y'all. Unfortunately, it's a fact. And I'm sure every one of y'all know somebody who's a coochie slave. Or a mint staff slave. They're out there, folks. I'm sure y'all know them. Woke Media, good to see you, bro. Yes, they be vamping at church. Next time y'all get that, next time one of y'all family members asks you to go to church, just be do something slick and go with them. Make them think you're coming to hear the good word of Christ. Good word of Jesus. Go with them. I'm, I'm saying just do this as a vampiric exercise. Go with them. And when you go there, Just watch and observe what the hell is happening in the church. Look at the pastor, poor child. Rev Reverend Shake a Leg. Watch what he or she is doing. See how the audience is reacting and feeding, or the congregation is reacting and feeding them, I mean, feeding him or her their energy. Dancing, the music, just feeding, feeding, constantly feeding. Watch how the Rev keeps getting more hype, more hype, more hype. All a ritual, a vampiric ritual, and they don't even know it. Yo, you want to hear what's even more retarded, Demetrius Clark? Go on YouTube and put twerking in the mosque or masjid. They actually got females twerking in the goddamn masjid, y'all, in the, in the mosque. Well, I'm from the old school, so we said masjid back then. They actually got him twerking in the masjid, wearing the fucking hijab and the veil. Anyways, whatever. A lot of our negative energy is definitely vampiric because we're feeding... Uh, a lot of negative energy feeds our fears, our doubt. And basically, those fears and doubts are feeding off of you, becoming stronger and stronger. So it is vampiric in nature.
That's right. That's right, Andre Pogue. Zev Love X from KMD. Peach Fuzz. Anyways. Demetrius Clark, that's right. When you read the book, it's even more detailed. Papatine is hardcore. And also read the book Darth Plagius. Listen, I read everything about the Sith Lord because the Sith, to me, are vampires. And perfect archetypes or examples of left-hand path mastery. It's, a, it's, a, it's the Sith Lord can be applied when you use chaos magic. And make that shit real. BTTV, yes. Hello, hi, how are you? Uh, let's see. Queen Z, what up, what up? So, yeah, a lot of people said yes, so y'all know. Lord Kush Goddess, you are the seducer scorpion. The greatest of all time, huh? You're the goat. The goat. <laughs> the goat seducer. You might have been in my dream, little Kush guys, but I would never verify this here. I verify it in private in the email. Anyways, some of your there's two people that are in here now that came to me during the week. Just letting y'all know. Ah, oh, shit! This thing always skips. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit. Shed, shed it went way down. Okay, here we go. That's correct, Andre Polk. Anybody who hasn't read the book, The Art of Seduction, must read. It's a must-have in your library. Must-have. Well, damn, chaotic Scott. Transylvanian. Roll Titan. Peace, peace. All right, Necro Cannon, yes. When you're feeding off with the choppers, first of all, before I even answer that part, first of all, you have to determine which chopper you want to feed off. Each chopper has its own energy has its own attributes and, and characteristics. So you have to first determine that. Then what you want to do is when you draw in from that chakra, don't draw in too long. It doesn't even have to be seconds. I would say the most a minute or two minutes, okay? You draw it in from that particular chakra for whatever purpose that you have to determine the purpose for no longer than like two to three minutes, all right? Yeah, Rogue Titan, see, that's the thing. When I was up north years ago, y'all got blasted. I used to get blasted with snow, and I just said, no more. I'm down here now. Y'all can have the snow and dig out. I ain't digging out of shit. Yesterday, when the snow was coming for y'all, it was 81 here. However, whenever y'all get snow here, we get a cold blast here. It's not really cold, but if you're in Florida, it feels cold because it comes with a lot of wind. It was like 63 here today. I know y'all saying, ooh, big deal. Shit, damn it, it's chilly for us.
Well, that happens the more you drain, the light colors will change as you're feeding. Um, not really quite familiar, Monique. So I'm not even gonna try to moose, which is listen, a lot of people moose make up shit. If I don't know, I'm gonna just tell you I don't know. So I don't really know the spiritual meaning or significance of a lazy eye or lazy eyes. So I'm not even gonna moose. Just gotta be real. I don't know. I'll research and look into it, but I'm not gonna make up some shit. Uh, I hate when this thing skips. Bear with me, y'all. This thing keeps skipping, so then I have to scroll again. That's right. Rogue Tide, you could go into that church under that methodology, and it's actually deconstruction and reconstruction. You're actually deconstructing the old paradigm that we were raised under, and you're reconstruction, reconstructing a new paradigm from the old for your purpose and your usage. So that's actually why I suggested that. Yes, Demetrius, in a masjid, they're twerking. Go look it up. The shit is bananas. That's right. Vampire in Brooklyn with Eddie Murphy. That was right on point. That exactly happened in that movie. True indeed. Magnetism does enhance and amplify your vampiric powers. There you go. There you go, Shanta. That's how you do it. You suck up that energy from all those spookies in church. Oh, you in SoCal, Lord. Oh, you chilling. True that. All right, y'all. So I went through. Doesn't look like people have a lot of questions. So if you have questions, hit me now. I'm sure there's some people in here who. Uh, probably study radio and not. Uh, radio and not. Shit, I can't even pronounce the word right now. Radio Onyx. Damn shame with vampire magic. Kevin Winley. Uh, we actually, let me go into that right here. I'm going to give you the vampiric steps to actually astral travel, which is, I'm happy you brought that up because it almost slipped my mind. Flying the darkness is the, is the discipline of being able to send forth your astral body and consciousness without moving the physical body. Will's astral projection is varied to individual on how easy or difficult it may be. Some have an ability which comes naturally. Other, others must build up the discipline and some project and sleep without even trying. The following simple steps will guide the vampire towards projection on different levels of ability. If you try and fail, keep trying and focus on the simplicity of the steps. Remember, simple intent. And the imagination to activate those desires and to experience is key towards successful initiation. One, prepare yourself in chamber without disruption from the outside, including animals who may seek attention during this process. First, perform the uh, summoning of the witch light. State your intent simply with something si similar to, it is my will to go forth upon the astral plane. This is why in my method, I always tell y'all I lay down 
And as I'm beginning to fade off, and I usually have some binaural beats for astral projection playing. So um, Rogue Titan, I may not use radioonics. I use more sonic frequencies with vampiric magic. But we'll go over that another day. So what happens is you, you give a simple intent. Mine is I go forth and travel this evening or I am traveling to the astral plane this evening. You some Something simple, but you keep affirming this as you're fading off. Okay, as you find yourself drifting off, you keep affirming this. Be aware of your aura. You may focus on the light, which may be naturally as a bright illumination, and you may seek to focus and slowly change this light towards a blood red of that of the, blo the black and blue fire. Focus now and gather shadow and darkness to be as a cloak around your projecting astral body. Adepts may change this appearance based on experience and discipline. Move this dark body outward with each breath until it is above you, connected by an astral cord or tendril. Transfer with a slow, steady breath your consciousness into this projected body of darkness or light. Feeling that you have ascended out of your physical body, move away from it. Flying the darkness may bring a feeling of being in water where movements are flowing and ethereal to some extent. Now that you can achieve the basic steps here, continue at different periods in this practice until it becomes very strong experience in which you control the process almost unconsciously. You will want to then shape the body of the darkness and light according to purpose. Shape your shadow and light body into a theomorphic form a different appearance and clothed appearance to your desire. If you are feeding, assume the proper form in which to do this. So there are simple steps to astral travel or practice astral traveling. The basic thing is do the witch's light, which we discussed a little bit ago. If you don't have this book, I'm going to say it again. Get this book. It's on serpentcrystals.com. You need this. Please do not tell me you're practicing vampire magic and not have this in your library. You just, you got to have this. This is one of them. You also got to have Vampire Magic by Father Sebastian. You also have to have the Assetian Bible. There's a lot of stuff you have to have in your library if you really are serious about practicing Vampire Magic. Nox Umbra, you got to have in your library. You got to have the Book of Vampire and Shadows. All this stuff you got to have if you really want to practice this. Okay? So, Basic thing is summoning the witch light before you astral project. As you create the witch's light, you're creating a ball of energy, a body of energy. So you're laying in the bed and you're making your attention, I'm astral traveling tonight or I'm astral traveling now. That, that body, that shadow body or that body of light, you start to visualize or imagine it raising up in your consciousness going with it. As you feel this, Detaching further from your physical body, your consciousness will ride with it where you will no longer be concerned with your physical body. You are then willing through your, your intent and your, your passion and your desire, the direction you want to go in the astral plane. Okay? In my method, I lay in the bed and I just repeat that intention over and over and I breathe deeply in and out over and over so I feel my body getting lighter and I'm creating a form. I usually take the form of a vampire bat, okay? So I take that form and I see my body as I'm saying my intention and breathing in and out, feeling my body get lighter and lighter. I feel it leaving my physical body and taking flight. So there's different methods. You have to find your own. So move to God, the benefits of joining an order is be able to perform certain rituals in a group to help assist your work. What I mean by that is certain dialogue takes place in an order or a group of people that can actually help promote your work or take you further. It is not for the purpose of following anybody because in our order, there is no worshiping and following people. It is about making each individual a God or goddess as they are and have always been just taking the key and 
helping them activate that key. But it's being in a group is being able to do group rituals when it's necessary. See, you can do these things. Let me say this. You could do this vampiric individually, solitary. But when you do a vampiric ritual in a group, man, that energy is powerful and profound and it will take you there immediately. So that's one of the benefits of doing it in an order or a group. Yes, the binaurals, the isotronic, those always work with vampiric magic that I found through my experience, they work best. I use a lot of sonic frequencies and I'll tell you what I also mean by sonic frequency. As I'm in the astral projection state, as I'm there and I'm actually reaching my intended target or my intended purpose, I start to actually create sound vibrations and frequencies, which may be interpreted as mantras, but they're really not, to tap into the subconscious and unconscious mind of that individual or groups of individuals I'm trying to connect with for whatever purpose. But, like I said, I'll share that more in private. All right. <laughs> well, Kayada Scott, go take a piss, all right? Don't be holding that shit. Yes, you can always leave a gateway open to your target, but I would advise that you close that gate when you're done with your work. Never leave a gate open because anything can come through. All right? So, yes, you can set this up in the corner of the room, but you close the door as you leave where only you have access to opening that gate to access and come back in your ritual work to tap into that, that individual for whatever purpose. All right. Michael Kenny, I'll do that. But remind me, because uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to finish up the Kali ritual. And then, so email me. And then after I finish up the Kali ritual, I'll send out books to those individuals who want the books we use tonight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's a good thing that you're doing, Necro Canning. Beautiful thing. But always remember to shut the door behind you or the gateway. Lucky D, that's right. I choose the bat. Not because I got a menstrual cycle, damn it. <laughs> Anyways. Yes, Queen Z, some people astral travel by natural gift and ability. Some people travel in their sleep all the time. Some of you people, I can almost guarantee you fly in your dreams. And you may think you're really dreaming that you're flying. No, you're actually traveling. You're actually in the astral state traveling. No, there's no PDF for that. You actually have to buy the actual book. Um, like I said, go to serpentcrystals.com. I have this book, Sachemopet. I also have the astral projection candle, the vampiric astral projection candle. You need that candle if you're going to astral project. I'm telling you now, it enhances it. I also have Vampiric oils. And one of the vampiric oils, which is uh, Barcalachi and Vampiri, is utilized for astral projection and travel. And it enhances your ability to astral travel. Okay? Check out those oils on serpentcrystals.com, the candle, all that ish. I have a section just for vampiric magic on there. And I put it there purposely for when we got to this point so people could go there and get the stuff and stop scrambling going to all these other people to get it who may not really have your best interests at heart or have no damn clue what they're doing. 
as far as what they're trying to give you for vampirism. Lucky D, that can happen very easily. You actually can go to um, another dimension. See, there's a multiverse. We're in a multiverse. Everybody thinks that we're just in universe or one verse. There are, there's actually multiverses, and there's multiple dimensions within that. This multiverses. What happens is you can have a dimension simultaneously vibrating with this dimension. Quantum physics has proved this. They can be vibrating along with this dimension we exist in. However, as you increase your consciousness and your, your perceptive abilities increase, you actually can start peering into the other dimension or through astral travel, go into the other dimension and actually see your alternate reality or your alternate universe that you're existing in simultaneously. It may freak the shit out of you sometimes, but it is possible and has happened and will continue to happen as you increase your abilities. Just a warning. All right, Necro Cannon, the skull. Um, I still have skulls coming in. Right now I have black candle skulls, which is good to use for your astral travel. You could get that. Right now, I have the coffins. You might want to get the coffin, which has the skulls on it. You have to have a coffin for your vampire magic, as well as the, the trifold or uh, a situary candle um, for your vampire magic rituals. Good. When I go into the astral, I take the form of a vampire bat. I take the form of Darth Bane, Sith Lord, the one who created the rule of two, and some other shit y'all will find out one day. All right, Lord Kush, got to do that because I got ritual oils. I got Kali oils. I got a whole little stuff there with Kali, bath crystals, Kali incense, Kali oils. Kali is a very significant archetype in the vampiric path, so you can connect that. Yep, Darth Bane, that's my boy. Yep, they do. Some people in hip-hop, yes, they do, and they're kind of obvious with it, but you got to really pick it up. I choose to be happy. Yes, I brought back information about your crazy ass. I choose, I choose to be happy. But they told me not to tell you. So stop trying to be sneaky and ask the question many ways. I choose to be happy. You're not getting that information. You got to find out yourself. <laughs> Anyways. The werewolf is a part of the vampiric working. I also have werewolf oil. Andre Pope, you heard me, right? I got werewolf oil on my site that you could utilize for your vampiric rituals. And I don't know if y'all have the ritual of the werewolf PDF. I have that. If you need it, contact me. You can use that with your vampiric workings. Caddick Scott, I've read that trilogy three times. And I'm presently rereading it again for the fourth time. I'm on book number two right now. And every time I read it, I extract new information. Every time I get new information, how to utilize it in this present day situation of life. And uh, Andre Polk, the name of the oil is lycothrampy oil. Well, 
Well, if you are um, related to Dracula and you vamp on someone's solar plexus, your ass might get charged up like you haven't been charged in a minute and you become, you start glowing like you in the movie Twilight and Breaking Dawn. You start glowing and shimmering in the sun. I'm just saying. Listen, the whole vampire, werewolf, that lore, that myth, I've been connected to that since I was a youngster. Some of my favorite movies are like Underworld. Underworld's my ish. All the Underworld, I love it. Yep. That's why I'm charged up, because it's the full moon. That's, and I'm talking about one of my favorite forms of sorcery that I work. That's why I feel the energy. We'll talk about that in private. I choose to be happy. Yeah, I remember the first one of that, American Werewolf in London. Then came out American Werewolf in Paris. That was my old joints. Good. If y'all um, woke media feed, feed, feed while you're at that party. Damn, one of y'all just ordered something while we talking. Little slickstus, huh? Feed woke me while you at that party. Get all that energy. Find the biggest booty to... F no, I'm going to stop. All right, anyways. <laughs> yes, wolf oil is awesome. Get the lycothrampy on my side. Yeah. I can't see nothing because I'm doing this presentation, y'all. God damn it. Y'all over there looking at the moon. I'm looking at a damn computer screen. It's not fair in life, I tell you. Life is not fair. Y'all, y'all do know the movie Underworld. You know the, the brother, African-American bald headed brother who had a really deep voice? You know that he was a partial creator of the, the characters in that in that movie Underworld and all the Underworld? Kevin Jarrell is his name. It was actually the creator of many of the characters in, in those movies. Check that out. And he was a he was a werewolf. He was one of the Lycan who worked with Lucian. And now notice the name of the head of the, the Lycan, Lucian. Hmm. Anyways. Yep. Kevin Jarrell is his name. Check it out, John. Go back and watch all of them. Watch the symbolism in the movie. Watch what it represents. There you go. Thank you for that woke media. Art of Seduction. That book is badass. Listen, brother like me had already been working seduction before that book. After I read that book when I was in college in the 90s, she was a uh, she was fire after that. She was fire. So check that book out. The brother put the link there. That's good. You have both natures, Caddick, Scott. Utilize that. Yep. Yep, that's right, Lucky D.
Remember that that name Lucian is also connected to Luce or Lux, which is light or light bear. He was the light bear of the of the werewolf clan. He had the conscious uh, con conscious awareness and knowledge to help the werewolves get ahead, to become more dominant, to become more masters over themselves. So these names. These these characters that create in movies all have a cult significance. Very good to study it and understand them. Yeah. Yep, there's a lot of, uh, like in the movie Underworld, that whole movie was about the hybrids, bringing about the hybrids, which in today's present world, most of us are hybrids. I know a lot of people clamor about they're the original bullshit. Most of us are hybrids, some way, shape, form, or fashion. We're all mixed up some way, some, somehow. We're all hybrids today. I know they may hurt some of these conscious coons. But so what? We're all hybrid, some way, shape, form, or fashion. So get over it. Anyways. All right, y'all. I'm going to take two more questions, and we're going to wrap this up. No doubt. When I was in the years ago, I used to sit in these damn freaking debates and different things people did. It's the debates that I used to have when we taught classes. I used to just get charged off, off of them. Charged up off of them. Feed off all the time. But un unconsciously, I didn't realize I was feeding off of the energy. Now I consciously realize I was doing that. Kevin Winley, that is 100% correct. Not sometimes. All the time, they, they, they're always trying to escape from their reality. As the conscious community is perfect for that crap. The new agers are perfect for that crap. Everything is ignored. Run from yourself. Ignore yourself. Fade, let it just release it. Let it go. You can do it. Get out of here. That shit don't work. All right. Rogue Tide, let me give you an example of ley lines and how to do it. Here's a secret, y'all. It's not really a secret. There ain't no goddamn secrets. I don't care what people say. There's a reason I moved to Florida. When I left up north years ago. I left in 1998. I moved to ATL in 1998, lived in ATL to 2001. Then I had a choice to either stay in ATL or move further south. I chose Florida because I'm sure some of y'all may not be aware, but there is, especially down in Miami, Bahamas, Miami area, connecting to Puerto Rico, back out to Bermuda, and we get some of that energy of the Bermuda Triangle ley lines that run through Florida. That's why I'm here. And for anybody who's ever been to rituals in South Florida can understand how the energy is heightened, especially if you understand that the ley lines that run through Florida. That's why I'm, that's one of the reasons I consciously chose to stay in Florida instead of staying in Georgia. So, now, here's something else. Vampires are notorious for seduction and feeding off of sexual energy. If you know where certain ley lines are stronger at, like in South Beach, which is close to Homestead, Florida. I don't know if y'all know of Homestead, Florida, um, but the Coral Gates built by Edward Lee Scotland, who was about 90 pounds, who used the power of magnetism and to lift up rocks that were tons and tons in weight 
all by his 90 pound self. So if you understand that and you understand that that energy runs through certain parts and you go to South Beach, my nigga, you know how to feed with the ley lines and the sexual energy all at once. All right. So that's just an example. <laughs> Yo, Lucky D, what's funny about that is I do a variation of that. I jump in my car. I drive down the Florida Turnpike. Anybody who ever been in Florida and driven down the Turnpike knows that when you get out of Orlando, get out of Kissimmee area and you get a little further down, there's a stretch from southern Osceola County so right before poor St. Lucie, that's a dry stretch with hardly anything around. I drive, lower my windows, and I yell at the top of my lungs to let all that shit out. But I realize just by releasing it is not going to solve the problem. What I'm doing is let, letting out the emotional blockages or traps that I have. But I understand that now that I've released it, I can get down to the sub layer subconscious to the abyss layer to really do some work on the blockages and obstacles that I've now opened a doorway through releasing some of that energy. I'm able to tap in further to the shadow aspects, the abyssic mind, and actually confront those things from the past, the trauma, the wounds, the chaos that was created because of certain childhood situations. The insecurities, the doubts, the lack of confidence, the abuse, or whatever else you experience, you can now attack it like that. But that's another story. <laughs> uh, all right, 40 deuce. I'm going to say this. 40 deuce, you can feed a lot of energy, but it's. I've been up to New York. Last time I went up back home was two years ago. I, didn't, I haven't been able to go. I didn't go in 2018. I'm going to go this year. But when when I go to 40 Deuce, it's a different kind of energy than when I was younger. Forever who was young and used to go to 40 Deuce back in the days, they know it was a completely different world back then. They don't Disneyized and, and commercialized the whole 40 Deuce area like never before. But that is prime time energy feeding territory at, 40 deuce, especially in the Times Square area. Energy's just being fed, given to people freely. Perfect place to just charge yourself up. Perfect place. Well, South Beach is the same, especially on Friday night, Saturday night, on Ocean Drive. Sometimes on Washington, it's the same way to feed. Here in Orlando, we have downtown, downtown, like Friday, Saturday night, well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, straight club city there in downtown. Like it's packed, super packed, the streets and block, club city, great place to feed off. International Drive, packed on the weekends, great place to feed off. So there's a lot of spots down here that comparable to 42nd. Here in Orlando, this is the tourist capital of the world. So I'm feeding off all kinds of energy. Last year, we had over 70 million people visit Orlando. We broke records for tourism and the amount of people visiting one place. We broke records back to back years here in Orlando. So imagine 70 million people coming to the city, how much feeding you could do. Just imagine. I'm just saying. Anyways, <laughs> Chaotic Scott, you crazy, sir. <laughs> Salute. 
You were staying at attention, huh? Yeah, and topless beaches be crazy in South Beach and certain areas in Miami. Crazy, son. Clearwater Beach, Tampa area, an hour away, an hour and a half away from Orlando. I be going there quite often. Perfect, perfect place to feed off of energy. Rogue Titan, yep. It's perfect spots in New York City to do that there. All right. So if there's no more questions, y'all, if you want, let me put my email address here for those who want some of the uh, PDF files of the books we utilize tonight. All right. Darkcoach is 9 outlookcom or go to my website to get some of the vampiric, Kali, or anything else you desire is on there. We got a lot of herbs to work your herbs during vampire magic, a lot of herbs um, and things to utilize for necromancy. And always remember, as a vampire, we always work with the undead or the spirits of the dead, as they call them. So necromancy is connected to vampiric. This is why I started necromancy and connected it with vampiric before we really get the order popping for those interested in that. All right. No doubt. Rogue Titan. Susie Rich, who won? Because I wasn't paying attention. My Giants been demolished a long time ago, so I, I just stopped. I lost interest in football a long time ago this year. Once my Giants was demolished, it was it. Where? The Rams came back? Let me check this damn score shit. Check this damn shit, man. Damn, the Rams came back. Anyway, whatever. All right. It's always a damn... Listen, man, them refs, Jack calls up, especially towards the end of the game, boy. Can't stand refs sometimes. But anyways, y'all, thank you for representing. Thank you for coming through. Next week, we're going to get even deeper into the vampiric. Send me your questions you have during the week so I can kind of sift through them to see what angle to come from come from through uh, Vampiric Magic next week. All right? Yeah, Super Bowl is going to be definitely a spot. And I, ATL, ATL going to be hopping for that because it's an ATL this year. Or that melanated energy. Anyways, whatever. So... Don't worry, King Sean Go. Once I hit end stream in about a minute, the whole thing will be back up. You can watch the whole thing immediately. All right? So, Pace, there's my email address. There's the website. Check it out. Get the vampiric products you need from that website, necromancy stuff from that website. Support your own. Let's get this popping. Any questions, email me. Any things you would like to talk about vampiric, send them this week. But we can formulate another discussion for a Sunday next week. And I might do another class during the week. I'll let y'all know. Peace.